Okay, so today we're going to be looking at designing Twitter or any kind of news feed system. So to start, let's jump straight into the functional and non-functional requirements. So for the functional requirements, obviously we've got feed publishing, feed retrieval, and then we're also going to look into other services like notification and analytics. And then for the non-functional, we've got high av availability and minimal latency. So these are all pretty standard, but again, your interviewer is going to want you to know going deep on each of these. So let's start off with some estimates. So here we're going to want to talk with our interview and confirm, you know, some rough numbers here, just so we've got an idea of the scale of the application. So I think we can assume that maybe there's 20 million daily active users. And then on average, each person will tweet maybe five times per day. And then so with that information, we know, okay, we've got five tweets per day, we've got 20 million uh, daily active users. Well, that means we've got 100 million tweets uh, per day. Uh, and if we've got 100 million tweets per day, well then that means we've got roughly a thousand tweets per second. Okay, and if we then assume there's a 100 to one read to write ratio, which is pretty standard for, for a lot of kind of social media applications, that means we're gonna be getting roughly 100,000 read requests per second, which is obviously quite intensive. So again, we've kind of got to design our system to accommodate for this you know, high load. Uh, and then as well as that, if we've got a uh, hundred million tweets per day, and then on average, you know, there's 140 character limits. So let's say it's a it's hundred bytes. That means we're gonna be storing roughly, you know, 10 gigabytes per day. And for this, you know, system design, we're, we're only assuming that it's textual content. Um, if you want to, you could also include maybe media, whether it be images, videos, links. And again, that's gonna increase the storage capacity. And we're also gonna probably have to discuss about CDNs and stuff like that. But for this system design, we're, we're not gonna to touch on that. So we've got, uh, 10 gigabytes per day, multiply that uh, for 365 days for a year, and then let's say we have to store for 10 years. That means we're looking at roughly like, you know, 36 and a half terabytes of storage. So that's kind of giving you a, a general sense of the, the storage uh, requirements that we're gonna have to have and take into consideration when, when designing our system. Okay, so here we've got a really simple data model. So we've got our users table here, which has an ID, which is a UID for the primary key. And we've also got other, you know, user related information. So we've got email, date of birth, created that. And obviously we could store a, a whole host of other information, but just for simplicity's sake, this is, this is what we're gonna model here. Uh, and then we've also got our tweets table here, which again, we've got uh, an ID, but then we also have our foreign key here, which is going to relate each tweet to each user. And then we also might have uh, content, which again, will be the textual content. We're making the assumption here that it's just text content that we're not, you know, including you know, other media, if we were, we'd have to handle that a different way. And then similar, we've got, you know, maybe an enum here, which could be, we could have a regular tweet, but then we could also have maybe a, a retweet and we'd wanna maybe handle those differently in the interface. And so we'd want some way of flagging the difference. As well as that, we have also got followers here. Uh, and so the really important part about this table is we've got our, our two foreign keys. So we've got our follower ID and our followee ID. And so that's, that, that's pivotal if we wanna have an idea about who's following who uh, within our system. And then similarly, we've got our feeds. So we've got you know the feeds, the ID is its primary key, but then we've also got the user ID for the foreign key. And then if we think about an application like Instagram, whereby you've got your main feed, but then you've also got your explore feed. Similar here, a user can have several feeds. And so that's why it's important that we're modeling it this way. And then uh, within each feed, uh, a feed will contain uh, you know many tweets. So it's got, uh, the tweet, the feed ID, the feed tweets will have its ID, but then we'll also have a foreign key of a tweet ID and another foreign key of the feed ID. So this is just, uh, a, you know, a really simple uh, high level data model overview. But if you can see, it's quite powerful. We can do a lot with this already. So I think this is a really good, you know, starting point uh, for, for any interview. So next we'll jump into the API design. So I think to start, we could say, you know, a, a simple REST API could be quite powerful. Uh, and kind of take care of most of our needs. So we've got you know our post endpoint, which could be just tweet and the parameters. It could take the content, which is the actual content of the tweet, as well as an auth token, because again, we want to make sure it's only kind of uh, users that are signed in that can uh, tweet. And then we'll also have a, a get uh, a get endpoint, which would be maybe just slash feed. And again, we just provide the auth token and this will then uh, generate the feed for us. And so while REST is one way of doing it, another way could be to use GraphQL. So GraphQL is just a simple query language that was made by Facebook in 2015. And so it differs to kind of, you know, REST APIs in, in a couple of main ways. So firstly, it's a single endpoint. So rather than having, you know, REST where you've got several endpoints, uh, here we only have a single endpoint. And then we also have the concept of queries and mutations. So queries would be when you're retrieving information from the server and then mutations will be when you're kind of changing data on the server. So queries would be equivalent to get requests and mutations would be kind of equivalent to post patch, post uh, delete uh, requests. 
uh, kind of on the, the rest side of things. Uh, and then a really important point here is we've got, it's the client that specifies the shape of the response. And so what the, what's the most important thing about that is, well, that helps solve the overfetching of data. So if you look at our example here, we've got a user, uh, we're making a query to get a feed for a specific user. And then for each feed, we're getting the feed tweets uh, and we're getting the ID for each of those tweets on those feeds. So it's really granular. So you've got um, a really good control over what you query. So if you think about something like, let's say I'm looking at a, a user's followers, if I'm looking at a list of followers, all I really want to see is their profile image and their name. And so if we're talking about a REST API, we probably have to define another endpoint to give us that, uh, that small amount of information, but then we're gonna have, you know, potentially you know, hundreds of uh, endpoints, which isn't the best, whereby in GraphQL, I can just specify a fragment which only takes uh, the information I need, so it, it, it scales really well. Um, and so if you know GraphQL well, it might be a, a, a solid talking point with your interviewer, but uh, yeah, REST, I think, is simple enough and we'll stick with that uh, for the time being. Okay, and so looking at one of the main uh, functional requirements is this, is this feed publishing and retrieval. So for us, what we're gonna be looking at is the fan out method. So fan out is basically just the process of distributing a message or content updates to all of the subscribers of a particular feed. And there are kind of two main strategies for this. There's the fan out on write, the push model, and then the fan out on read, the pull model. So let's look at these now. Okay, so for the fan out on write, basically in this approach, you know, when a new piece of content, so in, in, a, you know, in our context, there'll be a tweet is published, is then immediately pushed to all the followers feed. So here, a person tweets, uh, and then that information will then get pushed into all the their followers kind of news feeds cache. And so what this means is basically then uh, a user's uh, news feed is pre-computed, and then when they pull it, it's already computed, so that'll be very efficient, okay? And so, again, one of the pros of this, our reads are fast, as the feed is pre-computed at write, uh, and then our feed is also generated in real time, so it's, it's you know, very performant. However, that being said, uh, we are computing for inactive users, which is a waste of resources, but then we also have the hotkey problem. So, let's say, I don't know, Justin Bieber, how many hundreds of millions of followers does he have? If he, if he uh, tweets, uh, you know, we're gonna have to generate the news feeds for hundreds of millions of people, and that can be extremely resource intensive. So that is a massive downside of, of using the uh, push model. And then for the pull model, the, the fan out on read. So basically, instead of pushing content to a follower's feed when it's published, the system waits until the follower requests to view the feed. So here, it's a user request to the news feed service, and then it, it computes its, um, news feeds on read rather than on write. And so the pros of this, we don't waste resources for inactive users and the hotkey problem is avoided because again, it's on read rather than on write that we're computing. However, the massive downside is our reads are slower and obviously for one of our non-functional requirements, it is, you know, we need, you know, low latency and we need to be extremely performant. This kind of gets in the way of that. So. I think one way around this is to use the hybrid approach. So basically in the hybrid approach, kind of as the name suggests, we use a combination of the push and pull models. So we use the push model for the majority of the users, i.e. You know, when most people post, the news feeds uh, caches of all their followers are updated. And then similarly, we wanna use the pull model for celebrities, you know, people with large followings. And again, the whole point of this is to avoid overloading the system. And so therefore we force each user to get the latest posts from celebrities they follow on read. So it's this hybrid approach uh, that really kind of solves this feed publishing and feed retrieval problem really well. And I think this is kind of what a lot of interviewers wanna see. Do you know the difference, uh, the pros and cons of both the push and pull models and you know the hybrid approach as the kind of ultimate solution. Okay, so now if we look at kind of a general uh, architecture overview, we could you know potentially have a user service which would have you know a user cache for fast information retrieval as well as a user database, and we also might want to have a graph database as this will allow us to you know efficiently query complex relationships you know between our interconnected data. So if, if you looked at LinkedIn for an example, you know we can see who our connections of one of our connections are, and so to do this efficiently, a graph database is, is really what you need uh, to do that at scale. And then again, this user service will, will handle things like followers, following, you know, and just basic information like that. So a really important service to have. We'll also have the newsfeed service, uh, as we discussed with all the publishing and retrieval of news feeds. Uh, and that's also gonna interact then with the, the tweet service. You know, so that's gonna handle with posting tweets, favoring them, 
storing them and then also we can push them onto you know maybe like a kafka queue and then that could also be interacting with the notification service which could then uh, interact with another kafka and again if you don't know what kafka is i'd highly recommend it it's a streaming service that um, really helps in distributed settings uh, and then we can you know for these notification services obviously we can then push them to the relevant email sms firebase cloud messenger and you know apple push notifications uh, and then also i think uh, an analytic service would be super important to you know you know for usage metrics to be analyzed so it could be you know the number of tweets coming in per day um and then also maybe for users you know if they users linger on a post if they interact with the post well then maybe this is the kind of content we want to show them and so to provide the best user experience you know analyzing all this information maybe using spark hadoop all these kind of big data analysis tools could really help improve the ux uh, and definitely worth talking to your uh, interviewer about Okay, so now that we've looked at the main functional requirements as well as the kind of high-level architecture, here are some additional discussion points that can help really with those uh, non-functional requirements. So the first one is to keep services stateless. So you know, a stateless service is one that doesn't retain user ses session information between requests, uh, and so this is good for making sure that we can horizontally scale our application. Uh, we also want to have multiple instances of each service and so what this means is that when nodes go down within a, a particular service we've always got other uh, nodes available to you know handle the requests and so this means that we've got a really available system which you know when we're dealing at the scale of Twitter is definitely something we'll want to have you know we'd also want to spread our services across multiple data centers and this means that if we've got a global app it means that all our users can have low latency rather than you know only those in a specific geographic region we should also probably have many read replicas of most of our databases to handle kind of the large read load uh, that we're dealing with there and so maybe discussing discussing the the leader follower approach and similarly we, we would probably want to cache as much data as possible to make it as performant but then again we're also going to have to define you know cache, uh, cache expiration policies and whatnot so that's uh, but again a really important topic to cover uh, and then we probably also want to monitor usage metrics, uh, you know, in order to predict, you know, uh, queries per second and whatnot, and then maybe tailor our service. If we know that at specific times we're going to get more requests, we can probably spin up more instances of specific services and whatnot. So again, just making sure that uh, you know our system is really robust and you know, kind of predicts when um, you know things could get slightly more intensive. And then finally, if we were going to store other other forms of media, which is quite you know, common nowadays, whether it be video um, or images, we probably want to store those in a CDN. Uh, and so a CDN, and so this basically allows, you know, content be, to be retrieved more quickly and efficiently, which again will reduce latencies and improve the overall user experience. And so these are just a few additional talking points. There's many more, but I think this is a really solid foundation to do well in a Twitter or newsfeed related uh, system design interview. So hopefully you liked it. If you could like and subscribe, that'd be a massive help. And I will see you in the next one.